Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit online. If you encounter Christ in these weekend services, I invite you to share with your friends and family this online service by sharing and liking on Facebook. I also want to thank you again for continuing to be here. We are having good participation each Sunday with Backyard Communion. It's a short 20-minute service of sharing and remembering, praying, and experiencing God's grace and love through bread and wine. Please remember to register on our website, lchscentennial.org, each week. Our gatherings are at 8.30 and 9.15. We also have started a 10 a.m. live Zoom communion for those who are not ready to go outside of the house or unable to leave their homes. If you are interested in this and have not received an invitation yet, please call the church to get on this invitation list. Thanks again for your donation of gift cards to the Backpack Ministry. If you forgot and you would like to make a donation, your gift card from Target or Walmart will be put to good use as back-to-school plans move forward this summer. Thanks again also for remembering those who are experiencing food scarcity. Your food donations to the grocery cart get taken down to Integrated Family Community Services each week. The cart is in front of the church each day, Monday through Friday, and also on Sunday morning during Backyard Communion. Our prayer flag lines are filling up. Take some time to stop by the church and fill out one of the prayer flags, and while you're out hanging up your prayer flag, read the prayers of the people for the world that are already on the line. I want to say a huge thank you for your continued financial support of Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit through your tithes and your offerings. We're beginning to wonder about some of the different lighting for these services online, and we also are wondering what we might need to invest in as we start thinking about outdoor worship. We wouldn't be able to dream and wonder if your gifts to this ministry didn't continue. Please know that we also continue to lift you up in prayer each week. Now, I invite you to light a candle in your space as a visible symbol and reminder of the Holy Spirit's presence and partnership in our work in the world. As Solomon prays for wisdom, we seek to more deeply know the treasures of faith. In today's gospel, Jesus offers everyday images that reveal to us the reign of God. A tree that becomes a sheltering home, yeast that penetrates and expands, a treasured pearl, a net that gains a great catch. Even as we seek the riches of God's reign, the great surprise is that God's grace finds us first. Lift up your eyes to see the mighty works of God. We are the works of God's hands created in love. Lift up your hearts and receive God's gracious gifts. Give us hope for the days and weeks ahead. Lift up your hands to serve your neighbor. Teach us to act in faith. Lift up your voice to praise God with joy and power. As we worship, fill our lives with your praise. Thank you. 
unrelenting God, you shape us into living parables. Stir your spirit in us so that we may understand our experiences as healing metaphors and become creative and abundant stewards of the environment and community you entrusted to our love. Amen. A reading from 1 Kings, chapter 3. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numer numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall rise after you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Your decrees are wonderful. Therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word is open, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pan. Because I long for for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me. As you always do to those who love your name. Order my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity of dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me. And I will keep your commandments. Let your face shine upon your servant. And teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears. Because people do not keep your teaching. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his glory he goes and he sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, and on finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again. The kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they threw it ashore, sat down, and put the good into the baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. 
The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous, and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? He, and they answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is often a good practice for those of us who preach and for those of us who hear preachers to step back and remember how Jesus communicated with his disciples and the crowds that followed him. Today's gospel reading gives us a wonderful example. As we hear Jesus talking about planting seeds and baking bread and fishing, we are on familiar ground. Very often, thousands of years seem to get in the way and obscure our ability to hear Jesus in, in a similar as those who actually heard his voice. Last week, we were confronted with tares or weeds, and the kind it actually was was probably something called Darnell. Most of us may know little about Darnell, but we have all dealt with weeds. Most of us have also most likely planted a seed which is talked about in this lesson. Perhaps not all of us have baked bread or have been out fishing, but we know people who do. For once, we can hear Jesus with much the same mind as his hearers. These three illustrations they're not quite the same. The first two refer to something tiny and insignificant that grows or expands enormously. We could be trite in our explanation and state that all good things have tiny beginnings. And then this sermon, to your relief, would be over. But if you read the Gospel lesson again, you might notice two other of Jesus' illustrations. They may not be so familiar. They talk of a man who finds hidden treasure in a field and sells everything to buy the field. Obviously, he doesn't tell the owner about the treasure that's there. Then, there's a jeweler who comes across a costly and rare pearl and sells his entire stock in order to buy that one pearl. In both these illustrations, there's an element of downsizing, of divesting everything in order to gain something of enormous, far greater value. And then, there's the fishing parable, and it has a sting in its implication. It talks about judgment, some final reckoning based on our choice. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And as if to finally confuse us, Jesus re reveals his meaning in these words. Had you understood all this? And of course the disciples answered, Yes! And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Well, I hope that you can visualize the surprise on the faces of those who were listening to him that day. They thought they understood him, and they stayed in pretty clear terms that they did. And you know, I for one rarely ask the congregation if they understand a sermon, and perhaps that's just as well. So, 
What was a scribe? In a day when most people had only the most simple education, if that, the literate person who made that skill available was highly esteemed. They wrote letters for people, and they seemed to have acted for clients in the local courts also. Jesus usually presented a low kind of shyster view of the scribes, lumping them together with the Pharisees. But in this parable, Jesus talks about good scribes, just as there are also good Pharisees like Nicodemus or Gamaliel. What then is a scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven? This person is someone who dedicates her or his life to being kingdom folk. Kingdom folk. What might this mean? Well, one of the hidden truths of the kingdom is that we, each of us, and all of us, together as God's people, are the pearl of great value. That's how much our God loves each and every one of us. So much so that God would send his only son to walk among us and as one of us to show us the way of the kingdom. And this way has a lot to do with love. God is love and loves us even more than the merchant who gave everything for the pearl of great value. This is all meant to be an example of God's perseverance in loving us. Even God's wrath is an extension of God's love for us. As Maggie Ross writes in The Fire of Your Heart, the wrath of God is his relentless compassion pursuing us even when we are at our worst. This is why all these kingdom parables are so very important. They each point to the hiddenness of God's reign and the presence in our midst. They each suggest that the life of faith begins with something as small as a little bit of yeast or a single grain of mustard seed. We don't need to do what the world perceives as big and heroic things. As God's own pearls of great value, every little thing we do for others brings a smile to the face of God. Now this said, one of the big, biggest temptations that we confront is to regard our faith as an add-on or a pursuit for our spare time. There's much talk nowadays about America first. The gospel would never suggest this notion. For kingdom folk, God's reign is first. That doesn't mean that we're working for a theocracy. The necessary messy business of politics requires the sort of compromise that, if practiced within Jesus' movement, invites judgment. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. It's so easy for us to put our political and our social opinions first and then somehow shape and mold our faith to accommodate these views. It's in so doing, we quite often enlist Jesus in our passion for that which doesn't honor God's kingdom. We make our form of justice into God's justice. And our form of mercy, we try to fit into God's mercy. We have been called to be those who work for God. We are to work and pray for God in our homes, in our streets, in our communities, and in our nation. We plant little seeds of goodness and mercy and they blossom into visible signs of God's presence. We give up the things that clutter our lives or disguise the fact that we belong to Christ in order to live into this idea of being kingdom people. The kingdom is here and not yet. 
We can't create it, but we can create communities dedicated to God's mission. Places where people selflessly serve each other in serving Christ so that the watching world may catch a glimpse of what God intends. As a church, are we unapologetically on this path? I invite you each day this week to take some time to be silent and to let God thank you for what you have done for God today. Don't worry about tomorrow, just feel God's thanks and love for today. Maybe imagine God washing your feet at the end of a long day. Imagine God offering you a piece of God's bread and a sip of God's wine. Imagine God making you into to an integral part of God's body, that sacred mystery sometimes called the church. Beginning today, make time every day for God to thank you for what you are doing for God. Per persevere in accepting that you are God's pearl of great value. And as we experience the blessing of God's thanks, mercy, compassion, and love, we will become a new people. We will come to accept that we are God's pearl of great value. As that new understanding takes root and grows within us, Others will come and make their home among us, take rest among our branches, and discover their value as God's own pearls as well. Such a life of love and thanksgiving is what it means to be kingdom folk. We, will we have faith the size of a mustard seed to realize this pearl. Thanks be to God.
in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your word gives wisdom and understanding. Increase our understanding and all of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers treasuring the earth. May we live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As the birds of the air nest in branches of trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, strengthen us in our weakness and comfort us in our pain. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick. Today we pray for Elmira, Mark, Margaret, Jan, Dick, and those that we name now in our hearts and on our lips. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment and renewal. We pray for wisdom and discernment as we make daily decisions in the ways we continue to live and navigate this pandemic. Help us to be practical and compassionate. Teach us to be patient and diligent. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now receive this blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. May God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.